my age and I got to have a lot of boxing inside of, me, of, of my style of MMA so I had a lot of like boxing inspirations and he is one of mine and like it's great to see a guy with 46 years old inspire not just my generation so he's kind of my type of fighter that I admire like he's part of the past he's part of the present and he's part of the future the same thing I am for a UFC I start very young I come to the scene with 19 years old so my first world champion with 19 years old the tournament still back in the days that it's still the tournament two fights so I'm part of the past, I'm part of the present, that I'm for sure I will be part of the future, God willing. And I'm very blessed. I thank God every day for the gifts and the talent that he gave me, but also the pleasure to meet him. And you see how people, it's real online, you know? So many guys that champion inside the ring, but outside the ring they're not. So it's good to make friends and get to know people's values and morals. Do you think you'll be fighting at age 46? I, I don't think so. I, I don't plan on doing this, but you know, like I follow God's will and, and here I am, you know, 34 years old. I feel in, my, in the best shape of my life, you know. Uh, a lot of people thought I couldn't make 185 and, and I, I did backwards. I came from a heavyweight and I went down to 185. It's a lot of, it's a big fight. I have to in the week of the fight I have to lose 30 pounds. So it's pretty pretty intense. But also I enjoy every part of it. I have Mike Dutchie on my diet and I have, you know, just the principles of sacrificing. I only believe you can get the reward if you sacrifice. So if anybody wants to be something in life, you have to sacrifice. Peter, I know that you're very active in anti-kidnapping initiatives in Brazil. I know that, that it's touched you personally, and it's been sort of a, a problem there and in other countries in South and Central America. Can you guys talk about how it needs to, that, that, that's a crime that needs to be eradicated? Yeah, the, we're going to a big transition in the world. Everything. America is going for a tough economy right now. And everybody's trying to rely the, in one person. It's the president. He's the chief commander, but you have to understand, we need to lead our families to a better way of life. So we cannot put some one person guilty of this problem, or two, or, or three. It's, we need to unite it, not just on the case of the economy we're going through, because if America is suffer, everyone's gonna suffer. But the problem with kidnapping and missing people, that's a world problem. America is a world problem. A lot of people have been missing here. A lot of, a lot of parents, they are go with the kids to the market and someone steal their kids because they want to raise a baby. If, especially if you're a cute, cute baby. So I think we all have to be willing to understand that when you see something goes wrong, the best way to, to uh, uh, help is to all make a call. If you see something strange happen, you gotta be willing to, to get your phone and call because you can save life. You know, like in the case of my sister, we never thought, we never knew who, who did it, who committed, but for sure someone knew and nobody called. We received so many calls and so many kids, so many women was resolved, but it wasn't my sister. But I'm happy that in the case of my sister, I help other case. So it doesn't matter if you, if, if you live in a problem, why are you you waiting for someone to help someone else if you can? So bottom line, I go back to the commandment that Jesus, they ask you, say, Jesus, uh, what's the true religion? They say the true religion is help the widows and the people they're off. How many parents, how many sons and daughters, they still have their father life, but they live like orphans? How many wives and husbands, they have marriage, but it's all fake? So the problem of the world is leadership, and it's back, go back to family foundation. We have to bring these values and morals back to our, 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 our world. I wouldn't follow up on that. How long ago did this happen with this your sister? 2004. 2004, yeah. and your sister's name? Priscilla, Priscilla Belford. So, unfortunately, nothing was resolved. We still, I know, nothing. We didn't resolve the case.
we never found the body, nothing, the case is still open. But you know, I believe in God's judgment and it's gonna come for everyone. Everyone's gonna have to deal with your privacy and your public life. Vito, was it hard for you to get over the last fight for you? You know, it's part of life, buddy. You know, I'm an overcomer. It should be an overcomer, you have to overcome something. So that was my one of the mountains that I have to climb, and here I am, stronger than ever. Climbing my mountain again and looking for the title shot soon. And you got this match, if you like the style match up between you and the other? I don't know. You, you, you like the style matchup between you and the other? You know, I don't fight anyone, man. I, I, I like any match. Every match is a challenge, and every match is matched differently. Uh, I'm very focused on going out there, performing, looking for the opening. And, Looking for the win. That's that's my style of life. Do you still think about getting back to the championship again, or is that sure, not it? Sure. Still moving. Nobody. I'm overcoming, buddy. Nobody gonna take my dream away. I don't live by desire. I live by dream. And that's 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 how I'm planning to do is climbing that mountain again. As big as MMA and UFC are becoming, or already are, in the United States and around the world. A lot of the initial stars were Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and you know, um, how big is it in your country? And, and you, I mean, you still are, but you were a teenager and, and a superstar that you know, couldn't go out on the street. You were so widely recognized. Yeah, I, I, I really helped the sport go uh, like boldly in Brazil. We had a lot of criticism about the sport. And we are far behind America. America is, you guys are far ahead of us. And it's not just in the promotion, but in the publishing, you know. But Brazil is working their way up. We have the HTV, it's the open network, supporting the sport, doing the first time live event. I fought Chuck Liddell back in, I don't remember, it was 2000, I think, on the open TV because I went to a reality show. So I break a lot of barriers in Brazil. But now I think it's time to, now it's time to fly. And now I think it's all the young kids, they're gonna have the pleasure and the reward that we sacrificed in the past. So they're gonna have a, a good amount of publicity right now and a lot of sponsorship. That's, that's what we hope for. How big is the UFC Rio car? It's big, it's huge. It's, uh, it's gonna mark a century. And it's just the beginning. Brazil, Rio, every city, major city is gonna be holding these events. And uh, Brazilians, they love this sport. They really recognize all the idols all over the countries. And I think UFC is taking over, not just in Brazil, but China, everywhere, America, Europe, you know, everywhere. You wish you around the Rio Park? You know, the only thing I wish, every day I wish, I also wish, always wish. Wish is a word that has come in every human being. And when you wish, but you cannot, you know, you cannot conquer that, that's not a wish. So I don't live by wish. I live what, what's in my life right now. So that's the principle that I live. I have a dream, and I'm living my dream, and I'm in Philadelphia, I'm fighting on a big car. Legendary boxer gym. I will be part of Rio. You know, they're helping UFC Rio. I'm a very happy man. You know, I don't, I'm not a type of jealous guy. You know, I'm very happy to see the sport growing. Like I said, I, I'm part of the past, the present, and the future. So I'm, I'm very honored to be part of UFC. This one follow up question. One follow up question. When we talked about kidnapping, there were some major league players from, you know, from Venezuela that are taking extraordinary measures because it's, it's done for profit in, in some cases. And this initially happened with your sister. Like you said, children go missing, or people go missing for any number of reasons. But was, was there some thought initially that maybe that's what it was because you are a famous person? I don't know. I know one thing, man. If you don't have faith in God, and in this situation, you live a miserable life. I know a lot of people that have power, money, and authority, they think they're unstoppable. But I'm telling you, you know, life, life is a, is a, without God is like living without, you know, a, a car, a Ferrari, a driver. 
doesn't matter how rich and how powerful you are. You have to have faith in God and understand that everything, anything that I cannot resolve, God will resolve for me. So it's in God's hand. Thank you, guys. What do you think you'll see from uh, Akiyama? Tough opponent. He's going to be there bringing a war. And I'll be there. Do you think he'll be willing to stand with you? I think he's going to try to stand with me. Too. I think he's a very tough opponent. He's going to look for the opening. I will not give it to him. Thank you. Thank you, champion. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.